Are you prepared for an EMP attack? With the growing tensions between China and Taiwan and the U.S.'s strategic movements in the Pacific, it's clear we're on the brink of something big. FEMA urges us to get ready, but are we getting the full picture from our government? EMP attacks could cripple our way of life, yet the focus seems scattered. While the media and the government spotlight Russia and domestic threats, the elephant in the room is China's increasing aggression. We need to ask ourselves, who's the real threat? And more importantly, are we prepared for what's truly coming? FEMA suggests seven essential preps for an EMP attack, but is that enough? Drop your thoughts below. Do you think China poses the biggest threat, or is it just a distraction from something else? Let's be real, stay prepared, and question everything. Your voice matters now more than ever. Number one, well sleeve or well bucket. A well sleeve or well bucket, also known as a torpedo or cylinder bucket, is a straightforward and cost-effective solution for extracting water from a well without the use of electricity. These devices are designed to be manually lowered into the narrow confines of a well casing to retrieve water, making them an invaluable resource in situations where power is unavailable due to an outage, disaster, or remote location. The operation of a well bucket is ingeniously simple relying on a one-way valve at the bottom that permits water to enter the bucket while it is submerged. As the bucket is raised, the valve closes, trapping the water inside until it reaches the surface. At this point, the water can be released through a variety of mechanisms, depending on the design of the bucket. Some buckets have a lever at the top that allows for easy emptying, while others may require inverting or utilizing a discharge mechanism at the bottom. For those inclined to DIY solutions, constructing a well bucket is relatively straightforward. A basic version can be made using PVC pipe, a rubber flapper from a toilet tank, serving as the one-way valve, and either wire or screws to secure the flapper in place. Once assembled, the bucket is lowered into the well with a rope, and the physics of water pressure does the rest, allowing the bucket to fill and then be sealed by the flapper valve as it is lifted out. The utility of a well bucket extends beyond mere water retrieval. In scenarios where the water table drops below the reach of a submersible pump, a well bucket can serve as an inexpensive insurance, ensuring access to water regardless of electricity availability or well depth. This is especially relevant given the challenges posed by declining fresh water supplies and the need for resilience in the face of natural and man-made disasters. Number two, barter items. Barter items such as alcohol, cigarettes, caffeine, hygiene products, and entertainment items like books and playing cards can indeed become highly valuable trade goods in scenarios where traditional currency systems are down or ineffective. This concept is not just theoretical, but grounded in historical precedent and practical consideration of human needs and desires during times of crisis. During crises, items that disappear quickly from supermarkets often become highly sought after for barter. These include essentials that meet basic survival needs, water, food, shelter, and safety, but also items that offer comfort, a sense of normalcy, or fulfill specific needs that arise due to the circumstances of the crisis. For instance, water purification filters, honey, coffee, and gold jewelry are among the best items to stockpile for barter, as they address the essentials while being finite, non-perishable, and always in demand. Specific items like mosquito nets, first aid supplies, surgical masks, and medication could see a spike in demand, particularly in situations where medical supplies are scarce or in regions where certain diseases or conditions become more prevalent. Furthermore, personal care supplies like toilet paper, bar soap, and feminine hygiene products could become barter essentials, as maintaining personal hygiene becomes challenging when supply chains are disrupted. Moreover, the trade isn't limited to physical goods. Skills and services, like medical aid, cooking, sewing, and woodworking, can also be bartered, providing a way to contribute and receive goods in return without depleting your physical supplies. This approach underscores the value of preparing not just by stockpiling goods, but also by acquiring and honing skills that could be crucial in a post-crisis world. Interestingly, some strategies for effective bartering include listening well to gain intel and trust, avoiding scams, setting clear agreements, and understanding the wide range of items and skills that can be offered in barter exchanges. Items like water filters, food, fire starters, personal care supplies, and even condoms are highlighted as valuable for their utility in various survival situations. 
Essential and comfort foods, for example, could fetch a high barter value due to their immediate impact on morale and health. Thus, in preparing for scenarios where traditional commerce systems fail, it's not only wise to think about what physical items to stockpile, but also to consider the broader scope of goods and services that could become valuable. This includes understanding the practical uses of items, from disinfection and first aid to personal comfort, and recognizing the importance of skills that can be traded for goods or services. Number three on the list of items FEMA urges you to have, lightning. Exploring non-electric lighting options such as chemical light sticks, candles, and oil lamps can significantly enhance your preparedness for situations where electricity might not be available. Each of these lighting methods offers unique advantages and can be used in various scenarios to meet different needs. Candles are one of the simplest and most accessible forms of non-electric lighting, widely used for their ease of availability and the cozy atmosphere they create. However, they require caution as they pose a fire hazard. On the other hand, battery-operated or rechargeable flashlights offer a more secure lighting solution, allowing for mobility and providing a reliable light source during emergencies. Oil lamps stand out for their efficiency and the quality of light they provide. Unlike candles, oil lamps can produce a consistent and stronger light for extended periods, making them a valuable resource during prolonged power outages. They can be fueled by various sources including kerosene, lamp oil, and even vegetable oils, offering flexibility in terms of fuel availability. Yet it's important to use them in well-ventilated areas due to the risk of fumes. Solar lights represent a renewable and sustainable lighting option, harnessing the power of the sun to provide illumination without the need for traditional electricity sources. While they require sunlight to charge, solar lights can offer a practical solution for both indoor and outdoor lighting needs, extending their usability beyond just emergency scenarios. Propane lamps and battery-powered lamps are additional alternatives, each with its own set of benefits. Propane lamps can emit a significant amount of light and are useful in outdoor settings or well-ventilated indoor areas. Battery-powered lamps, including LED varieties, are safe for indoor use and can be easily positioned where needed without the constraints of cords or outlets. Number four, hand tools. One thing you don't want to overlook is your set of hand tools. You see, these aren't just tools. They're your ticket to keeping things moving when the lights go out. Hand tools, we're talking about the basics here, like saws, hammers, planes, you name it, are the backbone of any construction or DIY project, but their value skyrockets when you're in a situation without power. These tools don't need electricity to work. Your own two hands will do just fine. They're perfect for everything from fixing a door to building a shelter, not to mention the sense of achievement you get from working with them. It's about getting back to the basics, feeling that direct connection to your work that our ancestors felt. Now, these tools aren't just about cutting and hammering. There's a tool for every job under the sun, measuring, marking, fastening. You name it, there's a hand tool for it. And in a scenario where you can't just plug in a power tool, knowing how to use these can make all the difference. They're reliable, precise, and best of all, EMP proof. When it boils down to gearing up, you've got to weigh your options between renting and owning. For the long haul, owning your tools can save you a ton in both time and money, giving you the freedom to work on your projects whenever you need to. But if you're tackling a one-off job, maybe renting is the way to go. Number five, manual grain mill. In preparing for a scenario as extreme as an EMP attack, a manual grain mill becomes an essential item to have on hand. This device allows you to convert whole grains into flour, offering a sustainable and independent way to produce your own food. In the aftermath of an EMP where electrical devices may be rendered useless, the ability to process food manually becomes critical. A manual grain mill ensures that you can continue to make bread, porridge, and other staple foods, even when modern conveniences are no longer available. Manual grain mills can be purchased from outdoor and survival stores, as well as online marketplaces like Amazon or eBay. When selecting a grain mill, look for durable construction, ease of use, and adaptability to different grain types. For those inclined towards DIY projects, building your own manual grain mill is a feasible task. Materials such as a heavy pipe or a concrete roller, a frame made from wood or metal, and some basic hardware can be used to construct a simple yet effective grain mill. 
Online tutorials and guides are available to help you with designs and instructions. This not only provides a custom solution to grain milling, but also enhances your self-reliance skills. The reasons for including a manual grain mill in your emergency preparedness kit are manifold. Firstly, grains are a staple in diets worldwide due to their long shelf life and nutritional content, making them ideal for long-term storage. In times of crisis, having access to a variety of foods is crucial for maintaining morale and health. A manual grain mill enables you to diversify your diet by turning stored grains into edible forms. Secondly, the manual operation of a grain mill means it's immune to the effects of an EMP attack, ensuring its functionality when most needed. Unlike electric grinders, manual mills don't rely on power, so they can be used anytime, anywhere. This independence from the electrical grid is a significant advantage in situations where power is out for an extended period. Furthermore, using a manual grain mill promotes self-sufficiency and resilience. In an emergency, reliance on external sources for basic needs can become a vulnerability. By grinding your own grains, you reduce dependency on supply chains that may be disrupted during crises. This not only ensures food security, but also fosters a sense of empowerment and control over your situation. The physical act of milling grains by hand can be seen as a return to traditional methods of food preparation, which many find rewarding. It connects you with a process that has been part of human history for millennia, offering a tangible link to the past and a reminder of the resilience of human ingenuity. Number 6. Faraday Cage Adding a Faraday cage to your list of essential preparations for an EMP attack can make a substantial difference in safeguarding your electronic devices and maintaining a level of technological functionality post-event. A Faraday cage is essentially a shield. It encases your electronics in a container that is impervious to electromagnetic pulses, thus protecting the items inside from the damaging effects of an EMP. The construction of a Faraday cage can be as simple or complex as you need it to be. At its most basic, a Faraday cage can be made using a metal container with a well-sealing lid, such as a galvanized trash can or a metal filing cabinet. The key is to ensure that the items inside do not touch the metal directly, which can be achieved by lining the interior with cardboard or any non-conductive material. For those seeking a more robust solution, there are commercially available Faraday bags and boxes designed specifically for smaller electronics like phones, tablets, and laptops. Purchasing a Faraday cage might be the quickest and most straightforward option, with many retailers offering solutions designed for a range of needs and budgets. Online platforms like Amazon, as well as specialty survival and electronic shops, stock a variety of Faraday protection options, from bags to enclosures capable of housing larger electronic devices. For the DIY enthusiast, creating a Faraday cage presents an engaging project. With some basic materials, aluminum foil, conductive metal mesh, a ceiling container, and insulating interior material, you can construct a functional Faraday cage. Plenty of guides and tutorials are available online to assist in creating a cage suited to your specific requirements. This approach not only equips you with a protective measure for your electronics, but also enriches your skill set and preparedness capabilities. Incorporating a Faraday cage into your EMP preparedness strategy offers several key advantages. It enables you to preserve critical communication devices, data storage, and other essential electronics that could be pivotal in navigating the challenges of a post-EMP scenario. In a situation where the broader infrastructure might be compromised, having operational technology could facilitate access to information, aid in navigation, and enable communication with others. Number 7. Satellite Phone Now, in the face of threats like EMP attacks, these gadgets become lifesavers. You see, unlike our regular cell phones that depend on cell towers, which, let's face it, could be toast in an EMP scenario, satellite phones have got our backs. They connect straight to satellites up in space, bypassing any local damage on the ground. This means we can still reach out, get help, and coordinate with our community or emergency responders, no matter the chaos down here. One gem in the world of satellite phones is the Iridium Extreme 9575. This tough little guy offers unbeatable global coverage by connecting to the Iridium satellite network, which covers every nook and cranny of our planet poles, oceans, you name it. Plus, it comes with a safety net, an SOS button, for those just-in-case moments. 
Thanks to Iridium's network of satellites, we're talking about having a lifeline in the palm of your hand, wherever you are. In the unfortunate event of an EMP strike, being able to communicate is going to be paramount. Our usual cell networks might be knocked out, leaving regular phones useless. But satellite phones? They're way above the fray, unaffected by EMP and ready to keep us connected to emergency services and our loved ones. So, adding a satellite phone to our gear, like the Iridium Extreme 9575, and keeping it safe in a Faraday cage when not in use, is more than just a good idea. It's our connection to the world and a vital tool for getting through tough times with info, help, and a bit of hope. Investing in a satellite phone isn't just about having another way to call out. It's about securing a critical line to the rest of the world when traditional methods might fail us. It's about making sure we can still call for help, stay updated, and keep our families safe when the conventional systems have crumbled. Thank you for watching.